What is up, Drum Alert Nation? I'm your host, Killer Keep Star. Let's get right into the news. This week's tea comes from Trisha Paytas. I'm about five weeks late on this. We're going to be talking about a Facebook reviewer. To have an 11 year old sit down and tell you about a gay makeup artist. He has a friend and then she asked him to promote her hair stuff, but he said no and he went with another hair stuff. So he totally, totally betrayed her. Media right now, especially journalism, they're starving for hits. It's yeah. so hard to make money. It's so hard. Yeah. And so they're drowning. <sighs> I... I hate cancel culture. Everyone, hack is doing today. My name is Paul Gross, listen on this channel. Like videos about social media and the influencers on those platforms. So if you guys are new here now, so <gasps> these sort of content, make sure to smash subscribe. I know my OG subscribers out there have been waiting a long time for me to do a rant again, so... Without further ado, let's get into it. According to Wikipedia, cancel culture is a term which describes a set of behaviors that aim to hold individuals accountable by calling them out for problematic behavior, usually via social media. Professor Leah Nakamura <laughs> describes cancel culture as a way to deprive others of attention and their livelihoods. And to be quite honest, she's not that far off. What we now know as cancel culture is speculated to have been originated by black Twitter in 2015, though the effect of being canceled goes back a long while. As more and more people have become connected to the internet, the more and more things that are accessible to the public. You and I now have the frankly ungodly ability to go back in time and dig up anything remotely sketchy that any celebrity has ever said in the past. Hence the Kevin Hart and James Gunn situations. And although the consequences of being canceled doesn't normally last for more than a year and a half, it can still heavily affect an influencer's well-being in the social media world. And that's scary. Which is doubly sad now because at this point, cancel culture has shifted from being a form of justice to a place of pure entertainment. I mean, let's be real here. You even see that mindset shift in all the live stream sub counters that came up during the James Charles Toddy drama. The other thing that bothers me about cancel culture is that nobody is perfect. Obviously, there are some actions that are objectively wrong, and we should be able to look at those actions and say, that is objectively wrong. That's good as a society, that's constructive, that, that, that's great. But a lot of people who are being canceled are being canceled over a misunderstanding. And that's where the problem arises. It's just so annoying to open Twitter every single morning to see a new celebrity or YouTube content creator being canceled and all these fans and commentators grasping onto any form of moral high ground they can. If a content creator commits a crime, send them to jail. I'm on board with that. That's what the law is for. But especially for those creators who didn't really do that much wrong in retrospect, it's kind of insane to discount everything that they do for the rest of their lives. The more and more we talk about other content creators' mistakes, it's so easy for other people, other fans, to look at us like a hypocrite when we slip up. It's also just so sad to see how unloyal friendships can be, especially in the commentary and beauty niches. Everyone is everyone's friend until it's not cool anymore. And that's a real shame. You can disagree with an action that someone takes on the internet and still love that person as a person. I don't fault any YouTuber for profiting off the downfall of a creator during a major controversy. I mean, heck, I've done it multiple times myself. <laughs> but as someone who's been heavily integrated into the whole drama community over these past few months, it's insane to see how toxic and frankly stress-inducing the whole thing is. From a creator standpoint, there's an instant need to get out your reactionary opinions on every single solitary story as fast as humanly possible because frankly, speed warrants views. Quality doesn't matter if you have the tea, which is perfectly fine and it works well for a lot of people, but it's a lot to balance when you're forced to constantly chase trends. Now you might be wondering what happens after you've been cancelled. Well, <laughs> not that much. Of course, there's gonna be a swarm of people making videos on you, and at the end of the day, you're gonna see a huge dip in subscribers. But big picture, if you keep up what you're doing, you're gonna continuously reach a new demographic that didn't know that you were canceled, and you'll be perfectly fine. And on the back end, you're still gaining subscribers to balance it all out. The world has a lot of good people, and it's really a shame to see good people's careers destroyed because of a misunderstanding or a decade-old tweet. And because of platforms like Twitter and YouTube, it is so, so easy for anyone watching at home to just jump on the bandwagon of whoever's being canceled next. So yeah, <laughs> those are my thoughts on cancel culture and why I'm starting to hate it. I don't know about you guys, but I really feel like cancel culture has shifted from a way to bring justice to just... It, it's entertainment now, like, th that's so obvious. And that's also part of the reason why I'm going to be changing up this channel a slight bit. We're still going to be talking about social media and the influencers on those platforms, but over the next few weeks you'll be able to see what I've been working on. I'm very excited to not be a slave to the news cycle. And yeah, <laughs> that is my rant about cancel culture. Make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.